Hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Campbell County Trunk Show presented by Postmark LaFollette right here on WLAF. Remember, if you missed any of our previous episodes, you can catch them by going to postmarklafollette.org, clicking on Trunk Show, or you can go to the WLAF YouTube channel and check our past episodes out there. Tonight, we're very excited to bring you episode six of the Promised Land series, and it's going to be a little bit different. In the past, we've talked about how people first came to this area, how the coal mining industry affected this area, and we also talked about how the TVA and the move north in the 20th century kind of started shifting people away from here to the north to find work. Now, in the second half of our Promised Land series, we want to talk about the things that are bringing people back. Once again, 47% of Campbell County is public lands. And so many of us spend our time here outdoors, whether it's in our state parks or whether we're out on ATVs or on our boats at Norris Lake or on the, the wildlife management areas that TWRA does. Tonight, we bring you something a little bit different. You know, the one thing that we really want to do with the Campbell County Trunk Show is facilitate conversations, just like you were sitting on the front porch with someone. So while in the past episodes we've taken a lot of time and we've shown a lot of slides and overlays to give you a lot of information, tonight we're going to have a one-on-one -on -one interview with a Mr. John Norris. Now John Norris is a man that I've gotten to know during my day job with the Tennessee State Parks. He has came here and is volunteering his time to capture the people and the land of East Tennessee, specifically Campbell County, working for the Justin P. Wilson Cumberland Trail State Park. Now, he's originally from Ohio, he's been living in Florida, but he's found his way here and he's fallen in love with it. So, over about the next 20 minutes, we're going to talk to John, get to know a little bit about him. And I would like to invite all of you to take the time to enjoy this time with Mr. Norris. And once again, the Campbell County Trunk Show is meant to do just this. Just as we're sitting here having a conversation with Mr. Norris, we want to hear from you. You can record conversations of yourself at home, telling about your family history and your experiences in Campbell County. You can show, show us items from your past, and you can send them to us via email, phone, or on social media. As always, you can find that information on the next screen that we're going to show, and we're going to show it again at the end of the show, or you can go to postmarklafollett.org. Once again, go to the Trump Show icon. So next up, we're going to talk to Mr. John Norris. This is going to be about a 20 minute interview. So we invite you to sit down, get comfortable, and really pretend that you're having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Mr. Norris. Like you and him are sitting there and taking this time to be together. So that's what we're going to do right now. Thanks so much. And I hope you enjoy this time with Mr. John Norris. All right, and tonight on the Campbell County Trunk Show, we're actually talking with a Mr. John Norris, which is uh, someone who's found his way to our community um, from up northbound. But um, what I'll do, John, is I will turn it over to you at this point, and we'll start off by just tell us, uh, once again, your name and a little bit about yourself and where you're from. Okay. Originally, I'm from Ohio, and I found my way here via Florida spending time down there for about 12 years and then decided that I have seen everything I needed to see in Florida, <laughs> including the heat and the humidity. And I have enjoyed Tennessee a little bit previously to this when my F Florida friend moved up here to Sparta. And uh, I stayed with him and his wife for a while and got to enjoy the mountains immensely. And John? What particularly brought you to East Tennessee? Why are you up here at this time? Well, at this time, a year, I'm up here uh, to uh, get away from the pending heat of Florida and uh, to 
help out in the state parks as an archivist and uh, promote this area and the, uh, the beauty of it through archiving. Well, and John, you know, one of the things that we do with this television show and, and why I wanted to ask you to take part in it is, you know, we're capturing the history of Campbell County, but also the people. And of course, um, state parks and public land, big thing here in Campbell County, it's 47% of the land. Yeah, that's right. And um, what I'd like to ask you is, is like being here and being an archivist, um, what is it about archiving or protecting history that's always, you know, gotten your ear? Well, that's a good question. I uh, train people in it too. And one of the things I do is I ask the people to tell me about themselves or their selves. Usually within about a minute or two, they start talking about their past. Unknowingly, they're telling me their history. So we all have it, and it's the only thing that we really have. We can't say we have the future, and of course now it's just a momentarily. So uh, I enjoy archives more and more when I find out that the past is part of me in all of us. So I'm really into uh, doing that now. Well, when you say that the past is part of you, and that's something we're excited to know more about. So I know you found your way here from Ohio, but is, is that where you were born? Um, tell us a little bit about, yeah. about that. So you, what part mm -hmm. and what, what part of Ohio are you from? I am from Northeast Ohio, and that would be Akron area. And I do know about the great migration up to that area. Um, people coming from the mountain areas. Now, just where here in Tennessee, West Virginia, I'm not sure. <clears throat> but the, uh, we had jobs up there with the tire factories, Goodyear uh, and more. And a uh, lot of uh, industry up there. And there is a potential that my family was one of those people on the Great Migration, maybe my uh, grandmother and grandfather. I don't know for sure because the family didn't talk much about it. Well, and John, you know, growing up there, um, you know, what what was it that your family did? Maybe your parents. Um, what, what field did they work in, or or what kind of industry? Sure. Well, mom was a housewife, and my dad was a painter, like houses and things like this. All right. Yeah. And what about, uh, what did you grow into? What was your career before uh, before working as an archivist? So how did your parents and what they did, how did how did that shape you and, and what you did? Well, you know, I, uh, I more or less shaped myself uh, through um, Boy Scouts, believe it or not. I love the outdoors, always have as a kid, uh, and uh, eventually became Scoutmaster in the area too. So the outdoors, I think, is what shapes me and how my family possibly fits into that uh, was a trip we took out west in 1958 when I was eight years old. We went out to see Grandma out in Long Beach, California, and I got to see and experience uh, the beauty of traveling out there and camping all the way. And uh, so... It all boils down to outdoors. And uh, I think that's what uh, motivated me more so to come uh, to Tennessee and also to Florida before Tennessee. Well, and uh, for your, so kind of as a segue, I know one of the things that you did as a professional was kind of making the, the indoors more palatable for people to live in with your profession. But what, what, uh, what was your profession most of your life. Where did you work and what did you do? Well, I retired as an engineer from Honeywell <clears throat> Temperature Control Systems, which was at that time when I hired on, they were a Fortune 500 company. And I think uh, through uh, negotiations, etc., the downturn in the economy that they uh, really uh, went downhill for a while. And I was lucky enough to hang in there to uh, get retirement benefits from the company. And I was back in Ohio too. 
Well, and John, one of the, the nice things is we're actually doing the interview in, in your camper today, and that kind of fits in with the <laughs> the, the outdoors segment of, of what we're talking about. And that's something, you know, in this series, we're, we're shining a lot on public lands. You know, in, in previous episodes, we talked about the TVA, how that changed the area, you know, how it was the genesis of some of the state parks here, you know, mm -hmm. such as Big Ridge in Union County, North Dam State Park, Cove Lake State Park. Um, both of which are in Campbell County. And so, you know, once again, so much of Campbell County is public lands and it's part of, you know, who we are, that this, um, this whole program has explored and it's what's bringing um, folks to this area. Now we know that you came here to give your time as a volunteer to the parks and to the people and, yeah. and to the history. But what I'm really fascinated about, and we've had these conversations off camera with both of our love for the outdoors, but just, Tell me a little bit, what is it about this area that you find so striking and, and, and beautiful? Just tell me kind of the connection you've made with, with being here this spring and, and what really inspires you about well, it. Well, that's, that's, that's a good point. When I first got here, there were no leaves on the trees. <laughs> and everything looked dead. But I, being from Ohio, I knew it was just dormant until spring. And I got to see... The, the area changed, but I got to see the size and immensity of the mountains here. Uh, in fact, I probably should have been paying more attention in my driving <laughs> rather than looking at the beauty of the mountains on many occasions. But uh, I think the coming from Florida, where, you know, an overpass is called a, uh, an incline down there, and that's about the highest point. Uh, but up here, uh, it's just the majesty of these mountains that are overwhelming to me. And uh, I don't know, sort of mesmerizing. And I enjoy them so much and hope to get out and explore them more, too. And speaking of exploration, um, what are some of the, the ways that you like to enjoy the outdoors? Do you kayak? Do you ride a bike? Do you hike? I mean, what are some of the ways that, yeah. that you've really started to enjoy this area or want to? Uh, that you mentioned uh, my three favorite things, uh, kayaking, biking, and hiking. Uh, being a Boy Scout, we did a lot of uh, uh, overnighters, and once a year we would go uh, to uh, one big event like New Mexico and Boy Scout Ranch with the kids, take them out there. And uh, somewhat over here in Virginia, we'd take the kids to places over here. So... Those are the three events I love to do, a hike, bike, and paddle, yeah. And um, tell me a little bit more about that too, because as we talk, um, there's kind of a common thing, both from what you're doing now, um, you know, with the state parks to being involved with the Boy Scouts, but there's this this history of, of service and, and, and being outdoors. And, and what is it about, you know, getting particularly the youth, you know, outdoors, and enjoying the area and really forming a connection um, that you've enjoyed. So what is it that's always spoken to you about, say, parks or, say, the Boy Scouts and, and, and what it means to people? Well, I would say what it means to me is uh, calmness and tranquility. And also, I'd say predictability. When you're outdoors doing your hike, it's pretty much uh, predictable. Uh, it's not like driving a car when you never know what's going to happen, especially at this day and age. But uh, that, I think, uh, is very calming to me to know that it's stable. The environment, in my opinion, is pretty stable. But I'm no scientist on the big issues. I'm just a hiker out there doing my thing. Well, and being a hiker out there doing your thing is, is something that, you know, so many people do here. And I know you've been new to this area, but, you know, what's been some of your experiences, um, you know, even though you've been to Tennessee before, but, you know, interacting, you know, with the people, um, have you had much of an opportunity to get out and, and meet with folks and kind of what's been the, the reactions that, that you've seen and just... That's, um, that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, just the other day, uh, here in the park, uh, my bike rack had a jammed nut on it, and I don't have the tools to get it off. 
So I took uh, the bike rack down to our maintenance department here. And uh, they were so helpful right right off the bat and, and managed to get the nut off, the, off of the um, bike rack. And I see that a lot here with people. Initially, they're sort of standoffish to begin with. But in most cases, with, with most people, once you start talking to them, uh, they warm up to you real quick. And that is the case here in Tennessee, I found out. Well, and that's, that's the point of, of, too, of why we do these interviews is to give people an opportunity to have a conversation, you know, like with you, John, as, mm -hmm. as you're becoming a part of our community and, and people may see you out and about. And, and that's something that we really want to focus on is that connection between people. Mm -hmm. And what I'd like to ask, too, is, you know, coming from, you know, Ohio and Florida, um, what's one of the things that, that you really enjoy whether it's looking through archival footage or having a face-to-face -face conversation, but, but what is it about learning about other people or talking to other people and learning another area that's, that's always intrigued you? Like, why do you ask questions about, about well, the things I you did? I get a lot of history from other people. And we, you, said not, you said not about history, but, but then again, history is what we all have. I'll go back to that saying that I mentioned but to talk to people about their individual history. Now that is something I've never had the ability to do before. I would always be searching through archives and items and objects for the history. But to be able to talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, like we're doing right now, you get to learn more about them and where they came from. And a lot of times it's quite amazing about the culture that uh, we have had here in the past, say, 50 years even, and to what we have now, I, it's it's been changing over the years, I'm sure, most space, places do. Um, but I enjoy hearing about their experiences when they tell me. Well, and John, something you've spoken to is, even though you're, you're new to the area, you've taken a warmness to it. You've seen people take and a warmness to you after, you know, like you said, initially, you know, anybody's always kind of a little standoffish, but we're kind of bringing those, those barriers together. And um, I want to return to something that you mentioned at the first, and, and you may not know a whole lot about it, but maybe you do. Um, you had mentioned that there might be a possibility that you have family that came from this area. Um, yeah. Cause there are, any inclination of, of why you feel that that may be, or, or tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about, Maybe that sure. connection there. Yeah, sure. Well, my last name is Norris. And um, when I did a little legacy search years ago, I found out that it was from the northern British Isles area that the family um, uh, had a relationship with through DNA matching. And I believe that was the same area during the migration from uh, the British Isles over to... America and settling in this part of the country. Uh, whether it be Tennessee, I don't know. Could be West Virginia. So that's closer to Ohio. But, uh, but I think it was probably, uh, uh, in fact, I have to check on that. I think it was probably West Virginia rather than Tennessee, but I don't know for sure. I've never experienced so many people named Norris before or areas as here, though. So. I'm hoping this is, it turns out to be here when I get into uh, exploring the possibilities. Well, and, and having the town of Norris close by Norris Dam State Park and um, the, there's the Lenore Museum. Um, that's one thing I'll, I'll ask you about too, as we kind of continue this journey is, um, I know you've, you've had some time to, you know, visit Norris Dam State Park and go to the Lenore Museum. And, um, you know, tell me a little bit, kind of as we wrap up here, you know, what is it that excites you as someone that's new to this area and, and has learned about it to to archive it and to, to ask those questions and to visit the different communities that you have? Um, you know, what is it that intrigues you about the people and the land here that, that has made you, you know, call it home for this time and then to actually put put your thoughts into it? What What is it about this place that, that excites you in that way? 
Well, when it comes to the people, I don't feel the least bit intimidated. Everybody I have, everyone I have talked to has been nice. I have never felt a, a need for security or, or anything. In fact, I, I shouldn't say this, but I don't even walk up my trailer when I leave. <laughs> Or maybe I will after this interview. I don't. <laughs> so I do. I do believe the people are very honest, and I do believe that they are sincere in what they have and love the area for, and I I appreciate that. I think a lot of it deals with our folklore, which we we explore a lot in this area, with uh, what we do here in the parks. And I think they're very proud of that too. And that is what brought me, I think, to this area as much as my friend who moved here before me in Sparta. Because there's a, there's a great history. Well, and um, yeah, I know certainly having you work for Tennessee State Parks and you know volunteering your time with the, uh, the Justin P. Wilson Cumberland Trail State Park but also being right here at Cove Lake and, and having you as a member of the community. Um, it's always interesting as a local, you know, to see how people adapt and, and the things that they find so interesting about the area. Um, so in conclusion then, John, you know, what's one message, maybe your, your life thesis that you would tell um, people who, who live in an area or maybe even people who would visit other areas, um, what is it? that you feel and why is it that you feel it's important that people appreciate the land, but also, you know, talk to other people, learn about people, find out what their history is, as you stated. But um, why do you feel it's important that we all connect mm. with where we're from and where we're going and the people we meet along the way? Um, what came to mind when you were saying that was my old area in Ohio where there's industry, too much industry, and um, actually ruined the land up there, in my opinion. Um, when I retired in Ohio, uh, it offered me very little in the outdoor experience. So that was the reason I came south, to regain that outdoor experience here in Tennessee, the woods, the uh, mountains, uh, the recreational opportunities down here, the purity of the, the streams that you have here is just uh, amazing from what I uh, grew up with in Ohio. So Tennessee's uh, got it for me. Well, that's always a good thing to hear, a great thing to hear. And um, John, we do appreciate you taking the time to sit down and take an interview with us. Tell us a little bit about yourself, but how, you know, you found yourself here into this area and um, fill a bond with it because it is important that we, that we realize that it takes so many to make a community, both people that are from here, both people that have chosen to be here. Because at the end of the day, if we're living here, that means we've all chosen it. We all have a history. We all have a past. And it's important that we um, are proud of it, but also... If you're a local like myself, that you talk to those that are not local and get it from a different perspective. So that's what we're trying to do. And thank you so much for giving us your time today sure. here to talk with us. Okay, thank you. All right, folks, that's it. That's tonight's episode. We wanted to shift gears a little bit and just do a one-on-one -on -one time with Mr. Norris because at the end of the day, it's about the people in this area that the Campbell County Trunk Show really seeks to get to know. And as this is episode six of 10, as we transition from, you know, all that we've learned of how we got to this point in Campbell County to where we're going, I felt that it was very important that we spend time speaking with Mr. Norris and getting a feel for the people that choose our community. Myself, I'm a local, but we all know people that have chosen to come here and have recognized the beauty of this area. Those of us that are from here have seen it for years in our entire lives. And these folks that are coming in are seeing it anew. And we welcome them to our community because they bring so much and they give so much to what we have here. 
they're part of us, and all of us came from somewhere originally. So that's why we encourage all of you to share your stories with us. And once again, we're gonna have that information at the end of the screen here that you can share with us your stories. But we also ask you to have conversations with others, learn from others. And as you've seen from Mr. Norris, we all have commonalities that we share. Now, episode seven of the Trump Show is gonna be a quick turnaround. It's gonna be on Wednesday, May the 12th at 8.30 p.m. right here at WLEF. And we're gonna continue exploring what it means for the future of Campbell County and where we're going and how, as we've talked about in the past, coal mining, TVA, the people that are here, the stories that are here, how that transitions to where we're going. So we want you to come back and talk to us on May 12th, join our show and enjoy it. All right, until next time, once again, I'm Brad Smitty and I'm your host of the Campbell County Trunk Show. Thank you so much for your time and your support. Have a good day.